Okay, so here's my video about my blood work. Um, so first of all, um, I think this is my first video I posted of me just actually talking here on Instagram. And I wanted to be fully transparent about mostly my face. So I have zero makeup on right now. As you can see, I have lots of acne scars, um, both sides of my face. Um, I will say this is much better than it has been in the past. And over the last week, I haven't had a single pimple pop up. I haven't had a single new one. So these are all still just kind of past scars from me popping pimples over the last, oh gosh, eight years of having chronic acne inflammation. And I wanted to be transparent about this because a part of me was like, oh, I really want to, you know, put on some makeup and look good for this video. But, you know, this is me. People at the gym see me like this all the time with no makeup. So I figured I'd just um, kind of present myself that way. This is how I am most of the time. This is how my husband sees me. And this is a big part of the reason that I even started Carnivore in the first place. The fact that I haven't had any new pimples pop up in this last week has been really awesome. I don't, can't recall a single week that's ever happened in the last eight years of my life. So it seems that things inside are healing. So that can allow the outside to heal as well. Because if they're continuing to come, there's no way that I can keep healing. So um, I know this is going to take time. But I know it'll get there at some point. Um, so... <clears throat> to start off, um, okay, about my blood work. So, Jeff, my husband, and I, we've been um, mostly keto with a carnivore em emphasis for the last two months. Essentially, December 30th was when we started, with the exception of some carbs here and there uh, for various reasons and some alcohol, um, but that's a video for uh, another time. And uh, so, aside from that, I want to get to the meat of the video, and that's, uh, no pun intended there, but that's the blood work. That's why um, I wanted to make this video in the first place. So, first of all, I took some vital signs on Wednesday, which was the day I got my blood work done. Or, no, the next day. Sorry, I got it on Tuesday. The next day was when I took the vital signs, because I think that that does play a picture and, and a huge role in... Um, and, and my whole overall health. So my, my blood pressure was a 109 over 83, which is a perfect blood pressure. My resting heart rate, according to my Fitbit, was 51 beats per minute, which normal is between 60 to 100, which is a huge range. My resting heart rate is below that because people who are uh, more fit have, tend to have lower resting heart rates cardiovascularly fit as well. That tells me that my heart can pump more blood per beat than a lot of other people at 51 beats per minute. My waist circumference was 29 inches and my body weight that day was also 160.9 and I am 5 foot 9 inches tall. <clears throat> uh, I do want to do my body fat percentage at some point because uh, you know that I think a big part of my weight is because I have a significant amount of muscle mass, but uh, it's still kind of a, a normal weight for, for my height anyway. Um, okay, so blood work. Let's start with my uh, inflammation markers. This was awesome. So red meat, everyone said, oh, red meat, super inflammatory. Clearly not, because I've eaten it pretty much every day for the last two months, and my CRP, which is a marker for inflammation, was 0.3. And normal, ideal, uh, is under 1.0. So I was well under that marker I, of, uh, of 1.0. So not really a lot of inflammation going on in my body, which is pretty cool. My, uh, we also tested my metabolic and endocrine health, um, including my fasting glucose and my hemoglobin A1C. Both of those were in perfect green markers. At uh, My fasting glucose was 90. Normal range is uh, 65 to 99. And then my hemoglobin A1C was 4.9, which was um, nicely under the 5.7 uh, maximum. I also tested my liver health. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different things we tested, all in the green. So 
Good to go there. Also my kidney and urinary health. So um, we did not test the bone creatinine. However, we did test um, you know, calcium and uh, some other markers, um, urea. All of those were well within the ranges that they're supposed to be in. Also my electrolytes. People are like, how are you gonna get potassium if you're not eating bananas? What's up with that? My potassium was perfect, right in the middle of that range, um, as well as some other electrolyte markers. So I was pretty, um, pretty hydrated. My kidneys were good. Also tested uh, my magnesium. My magnesium was also very good, right smack dab in the middle of the optimal range. So <clears throat> now let's get to some of the other parts, which are cholesterol and triglycerides. My triglycerides, um, ideally you want to be under 150 for your triglycerides. I was 37 milligrams per deciliter. So pretty optimal there. My HDL cholesterol was also very good at 82. Ideally for females, you want to be above 50. And at 82, I was very solid. That's really good HDL cholesterol. HDL is considered the good cholesterol. And then, um, so with my LDL cholesterol, so my LDL cholesterol was 145, and that's also in milligrams per deciliter. So ideal, according to the test, they want you to be under 130. So I'm just a little bit above that, but as I'm going to talk about in a moment, LDL cholesterol is just one component of a whole picture of somebody's health. And LDL may not actually be as significant of um, predicting heart disease as people once thought. And this is also totally in my opinion, I wanna be very upfront by saying I am not a registered dietitian. I do not give nutritional advice. I'm not by any means giving medical advice. This is, this is solely from what I've learned and researched and this is what I believe to be true. This is my opinion. So, with LDL cholesterol, uh, there does appear to be some evidence that shows that it doesn't actually cause heart disease. And I, in fact, it, there really isn't anything that says it causes heart disease. There is, but there is um, some evidence that it does. It is linked to heart disease and the development of it. But again, that's one component of so many other things. In fact, um, I want to talk about metabolic syndrome. So. Metabolic syndrome, according to the uh, American Heart Association, is classified as a combination of body disorders that when grouped together, increase the likelihood of developing cardiovascular disease or other cardiovascular problems. Interestingly, LDL is not even a part of this definition. So medical, meta, uh, metabolic syndrome, according to um, the AHA, there's five criteria. For metabolic syndrome and if you have three of these five you may or may not be diagnosed with it um, that'd be up to a uh, medical doctor to diagnose you with so i'm going to talk about these because i think they're very important and i think it's very important to um, look at these yourself and, and continue to monitor yourself and monitor your own health don't just leave it into um, a doctor's hands we we are all autonomous individuals we live in america we have a say in this as well. So number one is abdominal obesity. So if um, you are a man who has over 40 inches or a woman who has over 35 inches in your waist circumference, you are more likely to get heart disease. And uh, my waist circumference, as I stated, was measured at 29 inches. So I'm well under that. And then number two is your triglyceride level. So anything 150 and above, uh, of milligrams per deciliter is considered to be um, higher correlation, a higher link to getting heart disease. Mine was 37, no issues there. Um, third is the cholesterol component. Interestingly, it only specifies HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol. So HDL cholesterol under 40 milligrams per deciliter for men or under 50 milligrams per deciliter for women is considered an increased likelihood of developing heart disease, according to the definition of metabolic syndrome. Mine was 82 milligrams per deciliter, so I was well above 
what I need to be um, to, for that 50 milligrams per deciliter minimum. Um, so I found it very interesting that it does specify HDL. So we know that HDL does good, but it didn't say anything about LDL. So if LDL cholesterol was a huge component to developing heart disease, then why isn't it part of the definition of metabolic syndrome? Hmm, interesting. Number four is systolic blood pressure of over 130 milligrams per deciliter or um, A5 milligrams per deciliter for your diastolic blood pressure. As I stated, mine was 109 over 83. So in the clear there, 83 was getting kind of close to that marker. Um, I did retest my blood pressure. Um, I think it was Thursday or Friday and I was 117 over 71. So I'm still totally fine. Blood pressure definitely varies throughout the day, but two times this week I measured it and I was perfectly well under those numbers. Number five is the fasting glucose level of 100 milligrams per deciliter or greater. Mine was um, 90 milligrams per deciliter. So um, that was actually interestingly close, which is funny. I thought my um, fasting glucose would be less considering I haven't really had that much, but uh, yeah, it was 90. So still under, under that, that marker but uh, I'm curious to see how that continues to go, um, how, what, what trend that takes as I continue eating predominantly meat. So yeah, if you've, like I stated, if you have three or five of these consistently, then you may or may not be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome and uh, have an increased risk of heart disease. And uh, yeah, according to this criteria, I have zero of these components to be classified as having metabolic syndrome. And uh, also, in, even though my LDL was only slightly higher than recommended, the test uh, stated that my LDL levels were actually among the average for everyone who has been tested. So the, um, I went through the Ulta and Quest Diagnostics. They're the ones who interpreted that. And uh, they said, yeah, my LDL was actually average, even though it was slightly higher than, than recommended. Um, so I think we'll be seeing some changes in the recommendations in the upcoming years as more research comes out. So uh, lastly, I really want to talk about, um, in addition to blood work numbers, I think it is so, so critical to look at someone's fitness level when you assess their overall cardiovascular health. So uh, I, I listened to somebody called Ben Bergeron. He is the owner of CrossFit New England, and he also has sent many, many athletes to the CrossFit Games. And he is, is an avid contributor to promotion of health and fitness especially in the CrossFit community, but he also has a podcast called Chasing Excellence, where he goes into detail more about things he's read and um, what he's studied. So he suggests in one podcast that there, uh, the CrossFit workout called Nancy is a huge marker for somebody's health and overall fitness level. Um, one of the reasons is because it incorporates so many of the 10 pillars of fitness, such as stamina, flexibility, cardiovascular capacity, strength, balance, balance coordination um, are just a few of the ones that that workout contributes to. And so the workout, Nancy, so what this is, is five rounds for time of a 400 meter run coupled with 15 overhead squats, 95 pounds for men, 65 pounds for women. So that is over a mile of running coupled with, where are we at on that, my math, coupled with 75 overhead squats. That's a lot. And you do that as fast as you can. So two, uh, a year ago, my Nancy score was 1654. I retested my Nancy time yesterday and got a score of 1507. That is almost two minutes faster than it was a year ago. If my cardiovascular health was declining from switching to a carnivore diet, why would that have increased? Anyone who's done that workout knows how hard your heart starts pumping, how much you're breathing. Your heart is working. It is getting better. It's getting stronger from that workout. I've got two minutes faster like from a year ago. That's a sign that my cardiovascular health is improving. My fitness level is improving. My athleticism is improving. So I think that's really important to note as well. But, uh, other than that, um, thank you so much for watching if you got into this point. And uh, yeah, have a great Sunday.